Today's video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. Hey, it's Chris, and today I'm gonna to be giving you my thoughts on the new M1 iMac which you're looking at right now. Now, notice the chin. Everyone's talking about the chin. Everything above the chin is mostly display and a camera, while the chin itself basically houses the computer proper, which honestly, if you just think about it, that's incredible. So the really powerful and efficient chip lives in the chin. The incredibly loud and satisfying speakers live in the chin. The incredibly quiet and satisfying cooling system, that's in the chin. And then you've got the ports basically in that chin area too, just behind. So that chin there is really what makes this iMac thin. You wouldn't have the thin without the chin. So the chin's a win. I mean, this iMac design is 50% smaller by volume versus the old 21 inch Intel iMac. Seriously, what is not to love about this design? Today, I have a lot to say about the colors, about the keyboard, about the speakers and mic and the chip, of course. So let's start with the chip. So we now have the same M1 chip in the 13 inch MacBook Pro, in the MacBook Air, in the Mac Mini, and now in this iMac. And I guess that's not even counting the new iPad Pro. Now you can get a cheaper M1 Mac, the Mini, but you'll need to buy an external display and a keyboard and a mouse. You can also get a more portable M1, the Air or the 13 inch MacBook Pro, but you're gonna get a smaller display. So if you want an M1 Mac, you do want a bigger display and you don't wanna have to worry about buying and plugging in extra accessories, you just want it to be good to go, right out of the box, literally plug and play, then this iMac is the M1 for you. Now, I've already heard some interesting complaints and we're gonna basically address those as we go throughout the video, but I just wanna point out the target audience for this Mac isn't your high-end creative workhorse type of crowd, and it's not people who are looking to get inside and tinker around and add extra RAM, for instance. The target audience here is for people who want something that looks really good on their desk. They want to actually see it and care how it looks. And on top of that, they want some incredible performance. So when we're talking about the M1 chip inside this particular computer, like I've said before, the M1 is the M1 is the M1. It's an amazing processor, super efficient. Now, you're gonna see a lot of other videos talking about benchmarks and doing comparisons, and I really don't wanna wade into those weeds in this video. I wanna try to keep it more practical because this computer is really aimed towards your average, everyday consumer, to the point where I think power users already know to look elsewhere, or maybe to do some waiting. Suffice it to say though, if you wanna use this machine to edit photos, for instance, you're gonna be able to handle that no problem. And if you wanna have 20 plus Chrome tabs open at the same time without the system bogging down, you're gonna be able to do that too. And if you just want your apps to load really fast in a snap, or if you want it to wake up from sleep very, very quickly to the point where it's basically instantaneous, this is a perfect machine for your needs, right? So everyday computing tasks handled with ease. But there are certain creative professionals out there who are definitely going to be intrigued by this iMac, but are gonna wanna wait for maybe a 14 or a 16 inch MacBook Pro with an M1X or maybe an M2 chip inside or some future iMac Pro or future desk-based Mac. Now, I can only speak from my personal experience, but as a pro video editor, am I going to use this Mac? for my work. No, I'm not. I'm gonna wait for a machine that's a bit more capable in the graphics department and that I can push the RAM even further than what I can upgrade to here. But just to kind of generalize, people who I think would really love this, I'm thinking students in particular. You wanna spice up the dorm room and you wanna get your work done, but also be able to treat this like a TV thanks to the nice screen and the really amazing speakers. It's definitely going to be great for families where a lot of users are gonna share one device who also want this to look good wherever they put it, whether that's in the living room or maybe the kitchen. So again, kind of a general multi-purpose device that's also gonna function as a really great FaceTime hub because, and we're gonna talk about it in a minute, but the camera has been really upgraded here. And then I think also you've got a swath of businesses out there where looks matter and computers are prominently displayed and you wanna put out a cool vibe 
while also being able to get some work done. In all of those scenarios, I think the key word here is fun. This is gonna add some fun to your life life and also your work life. We're gonna talk about the colors next. There's some things you need to know. I don't want you to pick wrong, but first a quick word from our sponsor. If you didn't already know, Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one cleaning and optimizing app for your Mac. It's simple, user-friendly, and performs useful functions like scanning for junk files and freeing up storage space with the popular Smart Scan feature, which not only detects log and cache files that are no longer needed, but also performs a malware check and performs system optimizations. So whether you want to detect performance draining processes or get more control over apps and files, or whether you have an older Mac or an Apple Silicon Mac, keep things running as smoothly as possible by checking out Clean My Mac X. All right, colors. On Apple's website, when you're shopping for an iMac, you're gonna see some colors listed just plainly. Green, blue, purple. But there's really two shades for each color. There's a dark color on the back and then there's a lighter shade on the front. So green isn't really just green, it's dark green and light green. And it's the same for all the different colors, except maybe silver, which <laughs> if you're not sure which way to go, I'm glad that they included silver. Other people are calling it boring, but it's straightforward. And sometimes you just need that straightforward option. So I got an orange review unit, and to me, it's really only orange in the back, and it's really more of a peach color from the front. And if you can, I highly recommend going into an Apple store, going into a Best Buy or some store where you can experience these colors in person before making a purchase, or barring that, if you just don't have a store around you, do the AR experience. Use your phone just so you can see, is this something that you'll be happy with? when it actually is in your space. The color though is where the personality of this computer really comes through. We talk about the G3 lineup from a long time ago. This is tying into the past and those colorful candy looking iMacs of yesteryear. So the fun is back and it's not just on the computer itself. It's also on the keyboards and the accessories. You can see that here, but the color also bleeds through into the software experience. So Mac OS kind of adapts to whatever color of iMac that you get. So obviously that can mean your desktop wallpaper, but where I really noticed it was the first time I opened up Apple Notes and I saw that the links within my notes were actually that same orange color to match, which I think actually is pretty cool. It's very immersive, but you gotta make sure that you pick the right color here because if everything's tying together so heavily, you don't wanna get sick of it after two or three years, right? So all I'm saying is just choose your color wisely. All right, let's talk about the display. The display is over two inches larger than the previous 21 and a half inch. And I think that's good because 21 inches is just too small in this era. In fact, I wish that it was larger. 27 inches is like the minimum I thought that I would need to get my work done. But you know what? I adapted. If you're coming from a 27 inch and you're like, can I use this 24 inch? You get used to it. You really do. It's not that bad. And in fact, it's it's very usable. The display though is a four and a half K display. It's very nice. I would have loved to see Apple's nano texture etching included here to help get rid of glare, but it's not, and that's okay. I wouldn't expect it probably in an entry level computer like this seems to be. And it kind of hints in my mind at Apple coming out with something a little more pro or upgraded later on. And if so, that's something I'd definitely be interested in because I really loved it in the last version. I'm gonna go against the grain here too. And I'm gonna say, I don't mind the white bezel. There's so much whining and complaining out there like, oh, the white bezel and it becomes an echo chamber. And then pretty soon everybody's saying, I don't like the white bezel but I don't mind it. And I'll tell you why. When I'm using the computer, it just fades away. I don't even think about it. It's not like I'm looking at the screen, I just noticed this white bezel and I can't stop thinking about it. No, not at all. Now, if you're into photography, maybe you want that black so that colors can pop against it or something and you have a specific reason. But for your average everyday person, I just say, don't worry about it. It looks kind of cool actually. Okay, I'm gonna get a little repetitive here, but we're gonna talk about speakers, mics, and the camera, okay? If you're the kind of person who likes to plug in external speakers, then you're probably not gonna be happy with any computer's built-in speakers, including the IMAX. But if you don't like using external speakers, or you don't own any, or you're not interested in having any clutter up your space, you're going to love the speakers that are built into this iMac. And I could try to do an audio test here and show you, but it's just better for you to take my word for it. It's almost like having a HomePod, a nice HomePod on your desk. It's really rich and immersive, surprisingly so, considering how small the speakers are. 
I would almost say magically good. Some people have described them as almost having too much bass, being too bass heavy. I don't say that because I enjoy it in this particular computer. So they're more powerful and sound better than you would think. Also, the mics are really, really good for built-in mics. If you're the kind of person who likes to get yourself a boom arm and attach an external microphone to your setup, you're not gonna like the mics on any computer. But if that's not you, if you just want everything all in one package, you don't have to mess with it, you're going to love the mic quality here for your Zooms, for your FaceTimes, maybe even for a podcast if you're just getting started. And let me just say the exact same thing about the camera. If you're the kind of person who on your Zoom call hooks up an external Sony camera, okay, you're not gonna like the quality of the camera because you're not gonna like any built-in camera. But if that's not you, if you just want something that works, plug and play right out of the box, you're gonna really love the upgrade to the camera right here because the computational magic that's happening to make this camera hardware pop and look better than it otherwise would is really nice. Does it make up for not being 4K, for instance? Well, no, it's not a resolution bump per se, but it really helps with things like white balance, for instance. You will look better than on other webcams, for sure. All right, so we're gonna talk about the ports next. You've got the option of having two or four ports around the back. If you get the upgraded version, you'll get four ports. Now for me, I'm not the kind of person who likes to keep my keyboard and my trackpad plugged in at all times. And I guess, you know, if I was gonna import photos, I might need a dongle for an SD card reader. It's too bad that's not built in, but the ethernet port, should you find yourself needing one, is located on the power brick on the upgraded option, which means two things. Number one, Apple didn't have to make the Mac itself thicker by trying to stick that gigabit ethernet port in which is good. And number two, you're gonna have less clutter because you're gonna have one less cord shooting out the back of your computer, which is really great. This thing is all about reducing clutter if you use it the way that I think Apple wants people to use it, which is how I would use it, which is really by not plugging in a whole bunch of extra stuff. Because if you wanna do that, there's plenty of other computers you could get, in particular the Mac mini. I think four ports is gonna be plenty for 98% of the target demographic here. So when you hear people complaining about, oh, well, I wish there was more ports, that person probably isn't the target demographic. While you could plug in an external monitor or an external hard drive or an external microphone, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, this machine is really designed for the people who don't wanna have to mess with any of that. They don't want the clutter. They just want it to work and look good. And that is what Apple has delivered and delivered beautifully, I would have to say. All right, let's talk about the keyboard next, which is obviously color coordinated to match the iMac that you get. It's a magic keyboard, which means most people are gonna really like it. I like it, uh, but typing around on it, I don't like it as much as the magic keyboard for my iPad Pro. I just don't, there's something different. I don't know what it is, something with the key switches or something, the depth. But nevertheless, this is really good. I really like it. I can sit here and write article after article, blog post, you know, a huge term paper, a book on this easily. But even better, we've got Touch ID now. And it's weird because this button actually clicks, whereas the other buttons press. It's not a bad experience, it's a good experience. When you have to authenticate something or log into something, when you're buying something, this works really, really well. I've not had any issues with it whatsoever. And same goes with the trackpad. Now, my model came with both a trackpad and a Magic Mouse. I've been using the trackpad because I'm a fan of the trackpad in general. And I even edit my videos in Final Cut Pro with a trackpad, which is, sounds crazy to some people. I like the Magic Mouse a lot, but it's really cool that you can't have this option. And this white look looks amazing. Conclusion, uh, I've already given you basically a really in-depth video helping you decide who should buy this new M1 iMac. So I'm gonna link that up down below if you wanna continue your deep dive. But is there really anything that would keep me from recommending this? I'm having a really hard time coming up with the cons here. I mean, you can get something cheaper. We already talked about that. Some people don't like the chin, but I feel like we really discussed how that really enables this design. So I don't really see that as a negative. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.